What's up, guys? This is Andy, uh, BC Builds. I don't know if you can see out that window over there that it's a shit miserable day in New Jersey. It is rained all night and all day. Uh, but last night, there was a chance to actually do shit. I was just on the side, my daughter was sleeping. Uh, but like I said in the last video, um, the Kylan machine, I was actually going to lighten it up. Um, it's a Kylan Walker frame, solid cast brass, filed down so everything's even. Um, the only problem I had with this machine was it was just too heavy. It was around 8-ish ounces. Um, and it's not extremely heavy. There's machines that are heavier, but I have arthritis. So I don't know if you guys can see the discoloration. And sorry about the bad video. I'm using the shitty camera. My tablet, actually. Um, yeah, this tattoo's still not done, by the way. Someone's going to ask. Um, but anyways, it was this Kylan machine. It weighed a little much, um, but it's awesome. This is... Definitely my favorite power liner. This is what I use for traditional, those big, thick, sharpie lines. I don't lay them in all day. Single pass liner. You can use it with smaller needles. I just use this for bigger needles. Um, no. My other liner that I use on a daily basis is this, which is really light. It's a really small frame. So going from that, to the you know power liner when I'm you know either varying line weight or just doing something that has solid big thick lines the Kylan machine was kind of heavy so what I did as you can see I can just randomly I'll take this really brand off I just randomly drilled holes throughout the whole thing now it's not done I have to smooth the edges obviously it looks cool nonetheless um, I could have used the same size drill bit for everything but I think just putting different size holes all over it just kind of made it look neat um there's no pattern to it i just wanted it to be completely random like a swiss cheese kind of effect i just thought it looks neat um anyways um i've taken about an ounce of weight off this so this is it's still a little heavier than this one but not much this is around 6.5 ounces and this is around 7.2 which is good and I'm not done with it yet. Like I said, I gotta clean up the holes and sand the inside. I just put it back together to show you. Um, I'm also going to do the divot right here between the uh, screws. I think I might have a machine that you can see. You see how that's cut out right there, that groove? Um, people wouldn't think that makes much of a difference, but you don't need all that extra metal there. So I'm gonna actually cut that out on the Kylan machine to take a little more weight off I want to get it you know hopefully under seven ounces also what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put new coils on it because um, copper wire is heavy um, I'm gonna change the binding post to smaller ones or just put these on a lathe and file them down really smooth even though they look cool I'd rather have it lighter and more functional I'm actually gonna put stilted coils on this I'm gonna use all the same shit I'm just gonna take these apart I'll use all the same Except for, I'll just make them stilted. I'll cut grooves for the Eclipse, because it already has Eclipse. I'll cut new grooves, make them a little smaller. It'll take a little weight off, and it'll run on a little lower voltages. Um, and it won't be as powerful, but as it sits, this thing is monstrous powerful. That sits at five volts. And it's around 53 duty and around 137 to 140 cycles per second. As you can see, I took quite a bit of weight off, made it look a little cooler, and it runs just the same. Nothing else has changed. But I'm gonna, as you can see, these are big, thick binding posts. They look cool. They're super neat. But I'm going to take the set screw out, the thumb screw out. I'm going to put a, just a set screw in there. Um, like I did with this one. This one's got a set screw. All these little parts and all these little bits of weight that you take off, it'll make a big difference in the long run. Using a heavy machine for small tattoos isn't a big deal, but when you're banging out big ass traditional tattoos all day, having a super, super heavy liner, it's going to kill your wrist, especially if you have arthritis. Besides that, nothing else has been done. You actually see it's got a kind of money wrap on it. 
These are actually the wraps I took off. Uh, I think it's like an ITS machine. I just reused it. Um, so I'm actually going to drill a hole right through the vice tube too. Kind of like you see in Dringenberg machines. Uh, he does that because it'll hold uh, disposable tubes better when you have a hole drilled right through the center here. Right there. Um, I'm doing it just to take weight off. Because if you can, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it, but you can already see the whole inside is uh, slotted. There's grooves cut into the whole tube vice in there. You can see all the little lines going up and down. Um, so this has no problem holding any kind of tube. Um, given I have far more expensive machines that I can use, um, but I'm just highly impressed. You can buy this thing brand new, 60 bucks. Put a little bit of work into it, and this is an everyday workhorse. And even still, with all these holes in it, it's still structurally sound. It's not like I'm going to drop it and it's going to bend. Just look how thick that fucking frame is. This thing is Jack Diesel cast brass. And it's a softer metal than iron, but this will actually hold up better over time. Iron, like this, over time eventually becomes brittle. Cast iron, over the years, 20 years, it's, becoming, um, it's going to become brittle. So if you have like a 20 year old machine, you know, you've had your whole career and it's only you drop it, it can snap. Brass, you know, it will fatigue over the years, but nothing like iron. And it doesn't rust. You know, the colors might change a little bit, but it doesn't rust like, uh, you know, um, iron does. You don't have to worry about cleaning it. That's why I like iron brass frames. Also, Another one I'll show you, which I don't know if you guys have seen yet. I might have made a video on it. It's my DV8 machine. It's uh, another Monster Point machine. It's a Loch Ness frame, Monster Point coils. I put new hardware on it, the same type of binding posts, I think. Uh, I just changed the parts for looks. Everything is pretty much original, performance wise, except for the spring. It's the same coils. Uh, same capacitor, same frame. I just changed the binding post and the contact screw just really for looks. Sorry. Something's wrong with the clip cord. Also going to do the same thing on this, drill more holes to make it a little lighter because this thing, you can even see compared to this one, is a monster. Both big ass machines, but I love both of them. This is my long stroke liner. Uh, this is really good for details. You can push really anything with this. It's super powerful or it can run super soft. Right now, it's 140 cycles per second, 54 duty, it's 6 volts. This one runs a little high, the other one runs on 5, this one runs on 6, not a big difference. But to get that kind of speed and consistency, and just look at the stroke on it. how big that stroke is. That's a four millimeter stroke liner. That's a super long stroke. And it runs fast, it runs consistent, and it runs hard. The reason why it does that is because it's a cutback frame. Allows you to have for a liner's point gap with a long stroke in the front. It's just like a pilot. You know, it's like the same frame as the Sober Pilot for the most part. Silver Pilots are awesome machines. Even the knockoff Silver Pilot frames are awesome. Um, Elliot Nunez actually sent me one, uh, which I love. It's an awesome frame. I actually bought another knockoff one that I found online. I've only found one. They're hard to find. Probably copyright infringement. And then I have, as of now, I sold one to a good buddy. I have three actual Silver Pilots. I have the Brass Deluxe frame. Um, 
cast iron and then CNC cut one. Um, I actually just bought another one, which was uh, I haven't got yet. It's the Black Book um, Silva shader. It's not the liner. It's the Black Book edition. Um, what was the other one? And I also ordered uh, Seth Superior. Uh, it's a Brooklyn Blackie liner. God, these things were expensive. I might be able to kid wait and them. It's a Brooklyn Blackie liner. I don't know if you guys have seen that one. I showed you. It's a limited edition. Um, I bought it because I have the Tetra Circuit liner, which basically is an Adam Safiri frame, the Tetris frame. But if you look it up, just look at Tetra Circuit liner. It basically has a circuit board in the side of the frame, and you can change it from a 35 UF capacitor to a 47 to change the speed with just a switch. And then it's got a ribbon wire covers for the coils and the Brooklyn Blackie which I just saw in more close irons is basically the same thing just a different frame it's another limited edition so I had to have that as well um, I'll make a video on it when they get here so black book sharpie and the new Brooklyn Blackie switch shader um, they're actually a liner you can be using these both both that's it guys lightened monster frame um, I have another machine I wanted to show you, I just don't know where it is. Mm, it's up here somewhere. Whatever, fuck okay, it, I'll make another video.